Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, I am actually going to ask up front that you all possibly give me a little bit more time today. There is something that is on my heart from um, the scriptures that we'll be reading, and I don't know how long it'll take me to get through them. Um, I'm thinking I can do that, plus talk about what's on my heart within the 15 minutes. But if not, I'm just asking that you all just, just give me a little bit um, more time. Um, I don't have anything. Um, congratulations, Stallings family, on the arrival of Ava. She is gorgeous. Um, and that's A-Y-V-A, Isaac, in case you say congratulations. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else. No news from the doctors. I don't know what's going on. I've called the office twice this week. Nobody has called me back. <laughs> Just waiting on God, I guess, to do a miracle. I don't know. Heavenly Father, just thank you and praise you, God, for who you are, Father. Just sitting with you this morning, Lord God, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, Lord God. I'm, I'm full, Lord God. I'm, I'm thankful for who you are, Lord. I, um, I love you, Father. I, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that you are good. I thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from above, Father. I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we go through your word on this day, Lord God, that you would protect us, Father, that you would protect our minds, Lord God, that you would have us have a heart to heart with you, Lord God, and, and really ask some difficult questions, Lord God. Um, I ask that you would guide my tongue, Father, and have me to say what it is that your spirit wants me to say on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to um, start with Acts chapter 13, and we are going to pick up with verse 6 and read through verse 12. It reads as follows. And when they had gone through the Isle of Pathos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so his name, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at this doctrine, at the doctrine of the Lord. All right. So yesterday when we ended, we were talking about um, the Holy Spirit calling out Barnabas and Saul and saying, I need them to be separate to do the work that I have for them to do. Um, the saints pray over them, send them out, and they end up going to the island of Cyprus, right? And they take John Mark with them, okay? So they end up at this place called, and I'm going to do English, um, Salamis, or uh, yeah, I, I'll just do English for that one because I said in yesterday's notes how to pronounce it. So they end up at a place and they preached the word to the Jews, right? And that's what happened on yesterday. So verse six, and when they had gone through the isle unto Pathos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. All right, his real name, how to pronounce it is um, Bar-Esu, Bar-Esu, all right? So almost like Spanish, Jesus, um, Bar-Esu. So, What's happening is Paul and um, Barnabas have been called by this deputy. And so they are going through the island of Cyprus and they go from Salome on the east end to um, Pathos on the west end. And they're looking for this deputy that has summoned them. Right. But what they encounter 
is this sorcerer, this false prophet. And remember, we talked about Simon the sorcerer, and they called him Simon Magus, the magician, basically. And so that's what a sorcerer is, is um, a magician. He's a false prophet as well. So he's not only just trying to do tricks, he's presenting himself also as a prophet of God, but something that he said has not come true, okay? So that's how you get the false prophet. He's a Jew, okay? Which means he was raised up in the ways of the Old Testament, okay? And then his name, he is um, presenting himself as the son of Jesus. Remember, Bar is son of, right? So Bar Jonah, um, the other bars that we've met um, in Acts, and Bar Jesus, he's presenting himself as the son of Jesus, all right? Um, and we all know Jesus did not have any children, all right? He was not married, and he was sinless, so he didn't have any out of wedlock either, okay? And so verse seven, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. All right. So they find the sorcerer. Um, he's with the deputy, but they encounter the sorcerer first. The deputy's name is really Sergios, Sergios. Um, which means earthborn or born a wonder, okay? And then Paulus is his surname, which means small or little, all right? It's the same meaning as the name Paul, all right? And so they say he's a prudent man, and this means mentally put together, all right? So he he's sound in mind, he he has it going on. And so he, he had called for Barnabas and Saul because he desired to hear the word of God. Again, they come to this island, they're on the east end, he hears about them, he summons them, and so they go to the west end. Verse eight, but Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. All right, so again, um, he is blocking. Okay, that's what he's doing. And so he calls himself Bar Jesus, but his real name is Elimas, and it's pronounced Elumas, Elumas. And um, it actually means a wise man or a wizard. <laughs> I was getting ready to tell y'all I was about to sneeze, but I couldn't even get it out. All right. Um, so his name is Elumas, um, which means again, wise man or wizard. So when people talk about somebody being wise, the question is, are they um, do they have godly wisdom or are they trying to trick you and deceive you? OK, and then um, this is his Arabic name is um, Elumas, and this is the only mention of it in the New Testament. All right. And so he withstood them. All right. He's blocking and he's trying to turn the deputy away from hearing the, the word of God. And so verse nine, then Saul who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, all right? And so he's looking him dead in the face, all right? And um, you, you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost because Satan and his imps, they have a hierarchy, okay, y'all? Um, you can't just go up against somebody that is possessed with the devil and be um, a new child of God or a newborn in, in Christ. Um, you actually have to make sure that you are prayed up, all right? In the Bible, um, in Acts chapter 19, um, starting with verse 11, you hear about these seven sons of Sceva, all right? They are seeing um, demons cast out and all of this stuff. And so they decide that they're going to cast out this demon. And this demon responds and he says, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? And this demon comes out of this person and it jumps on them to the point as to where they flee naked. OK, so you have to make sure that you are prayed up. Um, my sister and I went through a house years ago and we blessed this house, casting out all these spirits because um, she was having trouble sleeping in it. And we thought we had the whole house done, right? We had touched everything except for one corner. Can you believe that not long after that, a car left the road and ended up 
bypassing the neighbor's house and all of this and somehow hit the corner of her house. And so Satan is not going to be happy. All right. So I just want to put that out there. But Paul or Saul is looking this sorcerer dead in his eyes and Saul is filled with the Holy Ghost. And verse 10 says, and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And I want to ask you, who in your life is your best bud, is right there hanging with you all the time, and is actually blocking you from being a Christian, who's blocking you from the faith? They know that if you get in the presence of God, they are done. They will be found out, um, Richard Pryor, the whiz. Who is it that is blocking you? In verse 11, and now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. All right. Paul ends up talking um, or, or pronouncing on this man uh, a curse, basically, but it's no different than what Paul himself had on the road of Damascus. He ends up blind, right? And so the question is, after this, after this season of the sorcerer being blind, does he really become that wise man that his name says, or does he continue with his wizardry ways, right? And it's one thing to be in the dark. It's another thing to have a wet presence in the dark. Um, there's one um, scene that I remember in boot camp, and it is probably not good, but we're out and, and we're, um, I don't even remember what week they call it, but we're out in the woods, right? And, and we're sleeping and it's just dark. It's an eerie presence, right? Like you can feel the darkness, you know, and we're wet and all of that stuff. And it is just something about, I'm cool with, you know, it being dark, but when you can feel it and that wetness is there too, just something totally different, right? And so then verse 12, then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. All right. So this deputy, he's a wise man, right? Or he's, he's a, a prudent man. He's mentally put together. And sometimes that can stop us from being a follower of Christ because we want to know how did a whale swallow Jonah and then spit him back up? We want to know how did a donkey talk, right? We want to know um, how did Noah and his family survive on a ship for over a year? Um, how was Peter freed from iron stocks, right? How did Elijah outrun a horse? Um, bring it home. You know, how did my nephew make the rain stop? How did God disguise a snake so that I wouldn't pick it up when I'm right next to it and freak out? You know, I don't know. Those answers are not always given, but it's because he is God. He can do anything. He controls the world, right? And so let's talk about this controlling of the world. Um, this sorcerer started out a Jew. He had a solid foundation with the Old Testament. Um, somewhere along the way, something happened. And that's what I want to ask you today. What happened to your faith? What happened to that solid foundation that you had? Maybe it wasn't as solid as, as this sorcerer, but you've heard about Christ. What happened? Is it all of the killings, the unlawful killings that are happening? Is it the sex trafficking? Did you get raped or molested? Did you put your trust in somebody and they took everything from you? Are you trying to do everything that you can and you just can't seem to get an upper hand and get a good job to be able to take care of yourself? What happened to your solid foundation? Are you looking at the things in this world 
and saying there can't be a God because of all the things that are going on. I want you to know that the God of the Bible is a God of love. He is a gentleman and he's not going to force himself on anybody. Okay. He has given us the gift of his son. He has given us the more excellent way. He's not going to make mankind choose him. He got upset with the world and their ways before, and he destroyed everybody except for eight people. And we came back just as wicked. He decided to just destroy a part of the world that was acting crazy with sodomy and all of this stuff. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and we just took it somewhere else and went crazy. When Adam and Eve sinned, they gave up their dominion of this world to Satan. So he is the present power and prince of this world. Okay. God has allowed him to, to be that. What I want you to know is that so many people say, well, if God this, if God this, if God this, why do bad things happen to good people? God is a God of love. He wants you to choose. If God didn't allow you to choose, you would say he was a dictator. You would say we're nothing but robots. You would say, how unfair is that? I know that you all have loved somebody or somebody has wanted y'all to love them. And when it is forced, when you don't have a choice, it's not love. God has given us a choice. Okay, he's not going to make anybody serve him. He's not going to make anybody want to do what this word says. So until he comes back and he just does what the Bible says in Revelation and some other places. Until then, we're going to see the wickedness because Satan has already been condemned to hell. Mankind still has a choice. OK, mankind can still go to heaven. You can have been wicked all these years. You can be 90 years old. And when you decide that you want to follow Christ, all of that other stuff is wiped away and you can still go to heaven. Satan cannot. He is trying to take everybody that he can with him. Paul writes to the Galatians and he said, oh, Galatians. Who has bewitched you? You know, you started out with a solid foundation. What happened to you? Who came in and said, oh, well, this is the white man's Bible. Who came in and said, if God was good, then the blacks wouldn't deal with slavery. The blacks wouldn't be oppressed. The blacks wouldn't um, continue to be killed when they're innocent. Who came in and told you that God is not perfect and he made a mistake when he created you as a female because you're really a male? Who is it that has bewitched you? I just really want you to ask yourself that. And if you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, please reach out to me and talk to me. Um, our God is good. He's good. Um, there's so much more that I would like to say, but I'm going to end with this. I just don't want Satan to have the upper hand in your life. You know, um, when I was young, me and some of my family members, we dabbled with the, the Ouija board. Um, had some family members um, trying to do seances, um, had some <laughs> had some issues with this twin and triplet that I created, um, imaginary friends and stuff. All of those things opened the door to the underworld. And so in 29 Palms, in my RV that I lived in, God just helped me get free. 
I'm talking about. You think I'm crying. And <laughs> it's not now. Um, I'm on the floor and I am just crying out to God and asking for forgiveness and denouncing Satan in his works and everything I can think of. Because if we open the door a little bit to Satan, he puts his foot in and he's coming in, all right, full force. And he's bringing his imps with him. And so this is why you have um, different areas of the world that are filled with promiscuity. You have different areas of the world filled with greed and pride um, because there are actually princes of the air that are assigned to different regions. So all in all, what I'm asking you all is to denounce Satan and ask God to fill your life. But just like the Bible says, when you push Satan out, you've got to study. You've got to bring the word of God in because if not, Satan is coming back in and, he, and he's bringing seven spirits more wicked than himself. Right. Um, and and I'll, I'll say seven demons more wicked than the ones that left because Satan is the ultimate wicked one. Right. Um I'm going to go ahead and end here. I love y'all. Thank you for the, the extra time, but I just really want to make sure that you all end up in heaven. Um, we suffered enough in this world um, that we really need eternity with rejoicing and no tears. And, and yeah, I love you all. Um, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and, and ask, Father, it that you would just be with us, Lord God, that you would help us to, to see, Lord God, what bewitched us, Lord God, what turned us against you, Lord God. Why is it that we don't want any part of you in, in Christianity, Father? Just ask in the name of Jesus that you would comfort us, that you would rock us, Lord God, that you would once again, Lord God, remind us of the salvation that has already been, been paid, Lord God, of the, the ransom that has already been paid through your son, Jesus Christ, and his blood, Father. Father, just ask that you would be with us as we go throughout this weekend. Lord God, protect us, keep us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I love y'all. Bye-bye.